Good morning, good evening, and good night. I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to 144 from the stars to row. Not meditating on the energy at all. We're just going to go ahead and dive in together. See what spirit would like the collective to know. Oh, wow. The first card for your reading collective is the creator. So that really sets the tone pretty high. All right. I see letting go at the bottom of the deck and uh, also the energy of the number eight and two. So I do feel like a lot of things have um, came into balance recently or you're still um, in the process of bringing yourself into balance. However, depending on where you are in the journey, because many people are in different stages at this current moment, we're not all completely synchronized in the same frequency. However, I do see that um, there is like either a need to surrender or release, or you recently have done so, and it is allowed a breakthrough. So either you have just broken through up to a point in some kind of level of ascension, and you're like at the precipice of a new age, a new era within yourself and within your life. And there's just like that film. It's like, it, it really is. I'm almost getting like there, your face is pressed up against this thin film and you're looking out into your new life, your new self, um, this new view of reality. And this like little thin film is the only thing keeping you from Passing the barrier, like piercing through the veil of your new reality. Okay. What else? I feel like here recently, actually, like, it's almost like, um... I'm almost feeling like a winding up of energy. Almost like, um... If you've noticed an increase in synchronicities, like, I... If you're watching this channel, I'm sure you're probably already pretty far in your spiritual journey. I'm sure you already get synchronicities. You already see messages. You already notice how the universe will try to reveal itself in any and every way possible in everything. If you are able to perceive it. It seems like um, uh, like this serendipitous... like. Almost, I don't know. This is weird. This is like everything lining up. Like it's almost like eerie. Like it has this weird like spooky feeling almost to it. Like unnatural. Not Like it feels supernatural because it's like too many coincidences. Like you pull up to every light and it's green. Every light is green. Every time you pull up to the light, it's green. And then like, yeah, like I don't know. Like you see like seven blue cars in a row pass by you. And then each one of them had 33 on their license plate. Like, it's like, all right, all right. It's one thing to see 111. It's another thing to, like, you know, see a cardinal fly by you in the morning and you just kind of get a feeling that there was, like, a message behind it. This is like, all right, this is like, pump the brakes, y'all. Like, it's like everything is aligning. Everything is synchronizing. Like, I feel like you're almost, like, in an in-between of worlds. Oh, my goodness, like... It's like time is, this is like you're almost approaching some kind of weird breakthrough and the universe is winking at you as you're approaching blast off into hyperspace. That's kind of what it feels like. Like, uh, I don't know. Uh, like, <laughs> you're, uh, you're so close to waking up from the dream. So then, like, everything in the dream is, I don't, like, a, it's interesting. The universe is funny how things work. I'm having a hard time explaining how I'm, I'm feeling this, but it's um very um synchronized. Like, everything is just aligning and everything is serendipitous. Everything is like, oh my gosh, like, it's, it's all alive. It's all one. <laughs> and it's all smiling and looking at you. It's proud of you. It's like, um... No matter where you see, you see yourself looking back at you in some kind of way. Like, I feel like you have really pushed the limits within yourself recently. And you have, like, this new face on in life. That's, I, I know that sounds funny, but it really is. Like, you're shining with a whole new face. It's like, oh, you have, like, this new connection 
Like you can feel the breath of even the room. You can feel the room breathing with you. You can feel that everything is alive. You can feel that it's you. You can look at the grass and see the you in the grass looking back at you. It's like everything is so surreal. It, it's, it's weird because this is the reality. But for us to really truly experience it, when we're so used to the persisting illusions of this world, it feels surreal. It feels like fantasy almost. Like, how could this even be? But it's true. You are tapping into a, a true awareness of self. You are really starting to learn thyself. You are um, seeing past the illusions and you are no longer limited by the previous bounds of things like separation or constructs or thoughts. Your mind isn't limited. Um, the energy can pass through you freely without your subconscious trying to nitpick all of its um, what it's looking for, like all the the patterns and information that fits its subconscious narrative to try to fit, because that's really what our psyche is. It's just a pattern finding machine, and we tell it what kind of patterns we want it to find. And some people call it fate, other people call it manifestation. Other people call it free will. You can call it whatever you want, but it's really the same thing. We're observing the same phenomenon. We have compromise right here. And then immediately after this compromise, we go into the seven. So six into the seven. So there's this direct progression. So this is a good compromise. Um, this could be like, you know, maybe you really enjoy having that cigar every weekend, but you're going to compromise that um, desire, maybe cut back on it. I don't know what these compromises are for you, but it seems like it definitely was in tune. It was in flow of your destination. It was necessary for you to shed off that unnecessary weight. This could be um, connections. This could be beliefs. This could be thoughts. This could be um, lifestyle or habitual behaviors. Um, we're so creatures of habit. That sometimes we don't even realize we've been doing something every day for the past seven years and it's killing us. Maybe we didn't realize. Maybe something, I don't know. Um, this is almost like, I don't know if you've ever, like, let's say you used to like drinking soda, right? You always drink soda. You drink soda throughout the day. You love Coke. You always open up your fridge. You damn sure had a cold Coke in that fridge. You open it, you drink it, you love it, it's great, it's better than water, you don't need nothing else. And then one day, you drink the soda and it tastes like chemicals. Like you can taste the cancer and like you're like, this tastes unhealthy. Like you, you literally can taste it killing you. I don't know if you guys have experienced this. When you like awaken, when you get to a certain part of ascension, you become hypersensitive to the impurities around us. So, like, for example, you could really like fast food, but you go through, like, this ascension period, and now you see, you like I said, you got this new face on, you see the world from this new lens, and now you bite into it, and you're like, you feel like crud. Like, the moment you bite into it, you're like, ugh, like, this is, this is gross. This isn't even food. What is this? There's no life in this. This is just death. Why am I eating this? I don't know. It's like maybe something just comes so blatantly clear that it's like it's a no brainer. So like, I don't know, uh, let's say back to like some kind of habit, you're you smoke cigarettes every day. And then one day you just look at it and you're like, I really don't want that right now. Like I just that feels gross. I don't even like the way it smells like something about it just grosses me out. And it's, it's really not a matter of, well, I'll quit when I want to quit. Like, yeah, no, literally in that moment, you have no desire to not quit. So it's quite simple. You just don't do it because there's no reason to do it. You have no desire, no pull drawing you back into this unhealthy whatever it is. So you're completely like freed of it. 
I feel like there's like a cleanse of some kind of like toxic bind. There was something that wasn't healthy for you that was attached to you or you were attached to it. Maybe you guys had a nice little attached code, attached energy together. Like, I don't know. Like I said, like maybe it's something like nicotine or caffeine or something. You guys are best friends hand in hand. At the end of the day, that, that nicotine was always there for you at the end of the shift. And maybe, you know, you don't want to be friends with nicotine no more. I, I don't know. But it, it seems like um, maybe something that was unhealthy that either you weren't aware of it or you had no real reason or concern or like, like, for example, if you drink cokes every single day but you never had a cavity you never had acid reflex it, it never caused you any problems you had no reason to stop it's like now you have a reason to stop the reason to stop is you no longer have a reason to do it it's like something fulfilled you and it no longer does and it's a good thing that it doesn't it's a good thing you no longer get the satisfaction that you used to get out of it because it no longer serves you so don't fight it just drop it All right, what else? We have that letting go energy again. Like I said, we had this source coming out here. First thing was, first things first, let's get back to the basics. Source. All right, what's keeping us from being in alignment with source? Is there anything that needs to be shed, needs to be purged, needs to be cleansed, need to be perhaps forgiven? Maybe it's not a something you're actually doing. Maybe it's something that you're subconsciously holding on to. With this letting go, I'm almost feeling like uh, I'm seeing like this water drip off the leaf. And it's almost like the water's been dripping in the background and we don't even notice it anymore. So like, I don't know if you've ever like consciously told yourself, I forgive this person for so and so. And you believe it. You really try to tell yourself you forgive them. But part of you still kind of feels like you don't forgive them. Like you're on a conscious level. Your intentions are to forgive this individual. But there's something stuck. Or like you... And maybe you aren't aware of it. Maybe you kind of ignore it. Maybe it's like a subtle feeling. Like, I don't know. Was this a true forgiveness? Did I really cut the ties? Did I really surrender this or let it go? Why do I still feel this pit in my stomach? But you kind of just ignore it and move on. You're like, yeah, whatever. I ignored them. But subconsciously, on an unconscious level, you might still be holding on to that. And it might be something very specific. It might be that you forgave the person, but you didn't forgive yourself for feeling a very specific way in a specific moment with a specific... Like, it really could get down to, like, the deep nitty-gritty. And this is part of the difficulty of shadow work is it requires us to really go in deep, dig deep. Um... We have this, we are the world, and then we have ordinariness. That is really interesting. Because that makes me feel like um, just being here, just living your life, like for real, like this, this is wild. This is almost giving me the energy of like just you coming on earth, living this life, having a human experience, being here and existing, even if you don't sell that book. Or even if you don't produce, you don't like, even if you don't actually like accomplish what most people would accredit to greatness, right? You don't create some multi million dollar organization. You didn't put your art out there and like, you know, you don't have any like legacy or anything like that. It's like, you know, are you really in your purpose? But you're like, you're content in life. Or maybe you're not. Maybe you feel like. You are always meant for more, but you don't know what it is. It's like, I, I know I'm destined for so much more. I know I have such a big purpose, but I don't know what the hell it is. Like, maybe, like, I'm not good at anything. I don't have any skills. Like, I'm not saying that's how you feel, but even if it is or isn't, what if, perhaps, humor me, just you living here is your purpose? What if it's that simple? What if all the world needed from you was to just be here. And like that's such like a sweet hug from the world. Like damn. Like that's that's really loving as fuck. Like just the the only purpose in your life was to just be here. 
That's it. You didn't have to go out there and accomplish, like, triumph over women's suffrage or, like, like, you didn't have to do any huge historical anything. There didn't have to be no great feats. Your face didn't have to be put on everything. You could just be, I don't know, tending to your garden and humming and waving at the neighbor as they drive by. And you're in your purpose. You being here. The world needs you so much. And, like, I know that seems, like, kind of, like, corny and cheesy and whack but like no like how many people and just throughout your life on earth have you met that are miserable that are depressed that are hurt that are suicidal that are dealing with addictions and afflictions and are suffering haven't experienced a moment in happiness and i don't even think they're familiar with the concept at this point it's so foreign is it even real you're needed because we need someone to be here and to love, to be happy, because that energy gets put back into the collective. I'd mentioned in a previous reading about a spiritual transfusion occurring on earth, and it is when we flush out the old low vibration energy by having waves of gener like generational waves of incarnations of beings that came from other realms, other worlds, that vibrate at a higher frequency, that think, operate at a higher frequency. You ever been so confused as to why people don't understand that love is unconditional? Like you just, throughout your entire life, people don't understand what true love is. And it's almost frustrating because you feel like you're the only one in the entire world that knows what love is. Well, maybe you are. I'm not saying that might be a little bit grand of a delusion, but what if you really are that much of the minority? What if so many people here on earth really don't know how to be in their divinity, really don't know how to experience joy, how to love life and feel loved by life? Maybe many people are still stuck in the rat race of the world. You know, they're still stuck on the... The competition and the winning and the losing and the yes and the no and the black and the white and the, the whatever. Like there, there's always like a, a this and a that. They're, they're still stuck on duality. They're still stuck in that three-dimensional consciousness. Maybe this world needed someone to come here and just exist on their porch, minding their own business, knowing that all is love. Maybe that's all this world needed. So, if you feel like... Maybe your life is a little lackluster, like you feel like you were destined and like you have so much within you. You know you're destined for so much greatness, but you just don't know what it is. It just might be that your destined greatness is to simply fucking be here because you're that much needed. Just your presence. You don't even have to shake everyone's hand. You could have a, a friend group of five people. That's it. And that's you, your dog, and the couch, and all right, maybe maybe another human or two in there. You know, we don't want to be completely estranged. You know, like it, you don't even have to enter. It could just be simply you existing. That's enough. The effect that you have. Cause what if everyone else in your town is sitting there not experiencing love, not experiencing unity, not experiencing compassion? doesn't even have an inkling of an understanding of concepts like unconditional love, like free energy, or I am you and you are me, namaste. They might not even know that. I am you, you are me. What? No, this is dog eat dog. I don't know. People talk about they want to change the world all the time, but I don't think people really realize the effects that we have on the world just by existing in the world. You are equally as whole. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to um, explain the infinite and impossible at times. Wow. Yeah. Look. The rebel. Breaking chains. Breaking barriers. Breaking societal norms. You know, shaking up the old way of thinking. Being different. Being a way shower. Holding your light, your unique light, 
your own way of having your light. That's your light. No one else is going to shine that light but you. No one even has that kind of light. That's your light. And the world needs it. Just being here. Just, just shining. Even if it's faint in the horizons, a slight little speck in the darkness. That's enough. Someone might be able to see that speck and find their way home. So I really feel like um, a lot of a lot of you guys in the collective um, just don't fully understand how appreciated and how loved and needed you are, and just how purposeful and powerful and intentional your life has been this entire time. Even if it feels like you're just living a normal mundane life. Even if it feels like things are ordinary. Like you get up, you go to work, you do the same thing. You don't do anything spectacular. You're not out solving world hunger. or So how could you possibly change the world? By doing it from the inside out. By being born of the world and then uh, ascending beyond it, right? Transcending it. So... This this rebel, that's you, right? Changing the world just by being here. Shedding the things that are keeping you out of alignment from the creator. Because remember, if a person can do it, then so can we all. So if you can come here and shed all the things that would keep you out of perfect alignment with our source, our creator, and then you can live your life in that alignment with source... You just shown the entire collective that they can do it too. On an unconscious level. Even if no one saw you do it. Because we're all tapped into the same grid. Alright. So. That's where this comparison comes in. Right? Apples to oranges. Sin to righteousness. You know. Godly to ungodly. Love to not love. You know. What is the truth? What is the light? You're breaking the societal norms. You're, you are causing people to question, to think. Well, maybe, you know, maybe there is something I don't understand about love. I don't know. But you're doing it, and that's a start. That's a hell of a start. Because if you're doing it, that means others are doing it too. So keep going. It's okay. Walk the path alone. You don't have to have friends. You don't have to have a huge following. You don't have to have a bunch of people commenting, texting, calling you all the time, telling you or interacting. Like maybe that's not your role. And they're all equally important. There's no superiority. There's no glory. There's no honor. Because remember, all that's pride. If it's in any place besides where it belongs... And that's with the creator, that's source, that's where all that glory goes to. It's intense. This has been a hell of a journey for you guys. And like, it, it's funny because it's like, you ever feel like you did so much, but yet you're like, did I really do anything? Though? Like, it feels like you did so much, but at the same time, you kind of feel like, but I didn't really do anything at all. Psh, that's just your mind talking. You accomplished a lot. You really did. And you are in your purpose. If you've been wondering, am I in your purpose? Well, let me ask you this. If you're questioning whether or not you are in your purpose, are you choosing love? Are you choosing growth? Are you trying to heal? Are you seeking higher? Are you seeking truth? Unity? Are you expanding? Are you improving as an individual? Then yes. I would say there's a good chance you probably are right in alignment with your purpose. Because that's the purpose of life anyways, is to grow, to heal, to expand, to experience. And then we have completion, ripeness. You know, um, I had mentioned earlier about this spiritual transfusion and how this was taking place by um, generational waves of incarnations. And we saw this with like indigo children, crystals, star seeds, you know, we see these terms. That's what it is. It's labeling some of the um, characteristics of these waves that have been noticed. 
So there were some case studies done. Um, and actually, if you wanted to do some research on your own, you could take a look into Dolores Cannon would be a good start to take a look into some of these case studies I'm talking about. But anyways, getting back into this, there were um, documentations, observations of, let's say, there was a wave of like from the 1950s to the 1970s. And let's say they labeled them the, the purple unicorn challenge. All right, because I don't know what the specific is. So I'm just going to use imaginary right now. And they noticed that these purple unicorn childs had a high suicide rate. And then we take a look into, we um, interview and we talk to all these people and we ask them, you know, what was your experience in life? How did you feel throughout life? And a lot of these people in this wave would feel like, you know, life was great. It was fine. It was whatever. But I just felt like there was more and I felt like I was meant to do something else, but I was failing. So like there were people that were feeling poorly of themselves. They had low self-worth because they felt like they had some really big mission, some really big destiny, some fate for themselves. They knew they came here for a reason, but then they lived a normal life. And that made them depressed. They felt inadequate. They felt as if they didn't do their job. And this caused like a silent depression. And unfortunately, there was a rise in suicide. This is where I was talking about where I was saying, maybe just you being here is your purpose. Because what those individuals that I had just explained in this um case study was they didn't realize how much of an effect they did have. Like, yes, they did come and live normal lives, but they also marked a actual, you can measure this, you can observe it, you can look at history and see a change in society. You can see a change in the populace. I mean, look, look at like the generations where we saw People talking about like love, not war, and the, the hippie days, and the, this is part of it. These were waves of incarnations of people that came to bring a certain message to the world. This is part of this, this flushing out and transfusion of spirit. This is almost symbolic of what happens when you take in the spirit of Christ as a follower. Whether you are Christian or not, you can have your own beliefs. I just stick to what I know because it's familiar to me. You get that fusion of the Holy Spirit within your vessel. Then you get made anew. The new mind, the new heart that you see in the Bible. We're doing that on the world. We are the Christ consciousness coming in, transfusion, giving the world a new mind, a new heart. One that understands higher universal law. Not the rat race of the 3D that the world has previously been stuck in for far too long. So don't be too hard on yourself. Just you being your own unique light here on this world that may, this world may have never seen the light that you have ever before. You could be the very first to ever shine your star system on this planet. That's huge. Not only that, but you got to also understand that where you came from, your solar system, your star system, your soul family, if you ever felt like you yearned for some kind of home and you knew it wasn't here, it's because you're on a big mission. You went far away from home. And not only are you helping this distant land out here that we call Earth, you're helping your home because they're learning from you. Because you're doing something that they have not experienced. Not everyone has experienced fear, pain, taxes, murder, shit like the, the shit that's in this world. There's plenty of existences where that would have been traumatizing and like broken the whole system of experience. Their consciousness wouldn't have been able to handle it. But your soul family is learning through you. You might think your life is your own, 
and I don't mean to spook you out, but it's not. When you die, you take your entire life experience and you put it in a book and you put that shit on a shelf and then you open up a new book for your soul's journey. And then any other soul that ever wants to learn from that life you had, all they got to do is grab that book off the shelf and look at it and they can see your entire life. If you know what I'm talking about, you do. I'll, I'll give you a little hint, maybe like the Akash or the Hall of Amenti, maybe. But anyways, your life is not just your own. There are many others that are learning, seeing through your eyes and ears. I know that might be a little freaky and some people might be a little unsettled by that. But you were the one that was brave enough to go out there and do it. So that way others can learn. It's like you were the first person to explore the cave. It's kind of like, I, I don't know, like I, I, I'm kind of imagining people seeing a, a bush of very good looking berries. But we've never seen these kind of berries before. I don't know. Are they poisonous? I don't know. Do you know if they're poisonous? I don't know. Are you going to eat it? No, I'm not going to eat it. Well, someone's got to eat the poisonous berry because it looks pretty good. And I want to know if it's, that's going to kill me or not. So here you got you go eat the berry. You feel OK? Are you fine? No? Yeah? No? All right, come on, guys. It's cool. Let's go eat the berries now. We understand what's going to happen. It's like you are a learning experience for others. You are teaching your soul family, your ancestors, like where you came from. You're teaching people back from your home lessons that they could have never experienced home. Because in their world, some of the things that you're experiencing now it would have been impossible. Because the only way that you could experience some of the lessons that you have learned in this life would be if there was something like separation or hate occurring. And this is one of the few worlds where stuff like that is still occurring. So it's unique. It's a unique learning experience. It's rare. It's not one that many people get to have. It makes you very unique. To make you very powerful. Because you have incarnated in one of the most difficult times to incarnate and ascended. Not only did you incarnate in one of the most difficult times to incarnate, completely detached yourself seemingly from like your, your family, your soul, your memory. You got your memory wiped. You're like completely all alone, seemingly. The illusion of being all alone in this world and having to figure it out on your own. Then you cleared out karma that you didn't even understand what it was. Then you had to figure out what karma even was and why you were even going through it. And after you, like, it's like, wow, you're an inspiration. So many other um, life forms live their entire existence so closely to God with faith that they would never understand what it, like, the kind of strength it takes to live this kind of life. Where you have to be strong. You have to be independent. Sometimes you don't know the answers. Sometimes it is scary. Sometimes you do have to go alone. You do have to walk into the dark. And you don't know if you're going to make it out. You don't know where it heads. That's not an experience many life forms have experienced. Because most of life is very deeply with source. We're one of the most separated in this um, lower realm where we feel separated and some people have lost their damn mind and forgot what we are and that's why we see the issues that we see in the world. All right. So you are coming into a completion. This has been a very intense journey. And like, yeah, so you might not have some historical landmark in the future with your name on it. You might not like have some great accomplishment but this was one hell of a rod. And you did it like no one else could. You did it your own way. You broke the chains. You ascended. You acted as a light for others. You showed someone something else to compare to. Right? Because everything is relative. Um, Kind of like the... Um, the mechanics of light particles where if you shine a brighter light than the original, you can no longer see the dimmer light because of the brighter one, it outshines it. So for example, with what I'm going with this is 
<sighs> oh, gosh. If you lived inside of a box your whole life, and you never knew there was anything outside that box, you would think you were doing pretty well, right? Until someone opened that box, and then you realize there's more to it. I feel like you opened the box for other people. They didn't even realize they were in a box. But then they saw you and like you're clearly a fully evolved out of the box kind of person. And they didn't even realize they were in a box to begin with. So that's profound. You're helping a sleepwalker start to wake up. Start to even realize that they're sleepwalking. Celebration. I really feel like because of this, I feel like there's like, there's more to this and I'm not getting, and it might come in a different reading and it's probably going to be a reading where the title is like blessings on blessings on blessings because that's what I feel. That's why we have this celebration card out here. This has been one hell of a journey and you've come quite far and I feel like your, um, your soul family your spirit team, your gods, your angels, source is so proud of you. Is so happy, like so congratulative, like you did it. You did it. Good job. Like you're so excited. You did it. This is a great thing. And now I feel like you're going to be able to um, enjoy life in a different way now. Like um, you've earned your stripes, soldier. Sit down, take a leaf. You know, take your vacation. You've earned it. Thank you for your service. That's kind of what I'm getting. It's like you have already completed your purpose. So now you get to just enjoy life. Because you've already done it. You've completed it. Like, good job. You freed your ancestors. You brought in a new light. You accomplished everything you signed up to do when you came here. And maybe there's still more. But I feel like the real big crunk of it, you did. And I feel like if only you knew, right? If only you knew what spirit sees in you. We, we oftentimes are so caught up in our life, in our experience, that we really just fail to have a true perspective on us, on our own damn selves. And how far we have come, what we have accomplished, and just how good of a job we've done. So, good job. I'm proud of you. I'm grateful to have someone like you pop up in my readings. So thank you for your service for mankind. And enjoy the rest of your life. Because you deserve it. You've earned it. I'm going to leave this here. If you like the way that I read, please be sure to like, share comment, subscribe. I greatly appreciate every single one of you and I will see you next time.